Chris uh, from Vista PLC and today I'm going to walk you through installing a USB driver for RS Links and um, what I've already done is uh, I went here to uh, plccables.com and I clicked on the USB drivers and I've downloaded the appropriate driver for the cable that we're installing and today we're going to be installing a USB um, 17 uh, 47 CP3 or also this procedure will work for the 1761 CBL PMO2. So I've already downloaded my drivers and I've unzipped them into a folder right here, uh, a driver folder. And as you can see, um, there's just a bunch of INI files. Um, there's not a setup.exe to uh, double click on or anything. Uh, that's not how USB cables work. So all we need is to know is just the path of this driver here, okay? So we'll go ahead and close that down and we'll plug in the uh, USB cable now into the USB port. And it should say found new hardware, just like there. And you'll get this uh, box here, this found new wizard box. And um, what I like to do is I like to, it, basically the question here is it's asking you if you want to go out to Windows and look for the driver. Well. Windows is not going to have the driver because we've already downloaded it here in this driver folder. So I'm going to select no, not at this time. And then um, we're going to do um, an advanced install. So And this will allow us to pick the directory that the driver is in. So we'll hit next for that. And in this case we want to search for the best driver and we're going to include this search destination. And if you want to you can browse to the folder that you unzipped. And in this case I put it on the desktop and there's the driver folder. I'll say OK to that and it'll go out and um, you'll get a um, depending on which cable you have in this case I'm using an older cable uh, it doesn't have the Windows uh, logo testing so we're gonna get this warning here um, just say continue anyway to this uh, window here it's fine and the driver installs in two parts the first thing it has to do is it has to install the serial uh, USB to serial adapter and then the next thing it has to do is install the uh, COM port emulator so I'm going to click finish here and it's actually going to find the COM port next so you can see it said found new hardware serial port and uh, once again um, basically it installs uh, two parts of the driver the first part is the actual USB part and then the second part is the serial port driver so uh, we've got the same exact windows found new hardware and we're going to say um, not no not at this time to go out to windows and look for the driver uh, we're going to click advanced and then we're going to browse to our uh, d folder that we downloaded and unzipped and it's right off the desktop so we'll say ok there and we're going to get the hardware logo warning again just say continue anyway to this window and it will go ahead and install the um, serial port portion now so um, at this point we'll say finish and we should get a confirmation down here that it says uh, Windows says your hardware is ready to use so let's uh, go confirm that and also the other thing that we need to know is we need to know what COM port it installed it on so let's go to my computer and control panel and this is where we're going to figure out what COM port it's installed on we're looking for the system icon so we'll double click on that and in the system properties there's a tab called hardware tab click on that and then we're looking for device manager now for Windows 7 it's exactly the same we're just looking for uh, the device manager and in here is where all the hardware of your computer is so uh, what we're looking for is the COM ports it's going to be under ports and as you can see it installed it under COM port 5 now um, older software likes um, COM ports 1 through 4 and so um, I kind of have a rule of thumb that I like to change that to a COM port that's below COM4. So let's go ahead and do that while we're here. And we just right clicked on uh, properties there to get to that. And then we go to port settings and then advanced. And right here is how we change the COM port assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and choose COM2 because I want a COM port that's in between 1 and 4. And that normally works well for PLC software, especially the older software. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say OK to that and then in order to confirm this we're going to have to close device manager and then reopen the window um, to confirm that uh, we're on COM2. So we're now officially on COM2 and we also know what COM port uh, we need to go ahead and use some um, RS links at this time. So let's go ahead and close that down. Um, we're ready to go ahead and start RS links classic uh, for Rockwell software 
and in this case I'm using um, version 2.55 and um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to this communications tab and configure drivers and uh, we are connecting to a Micrologix 1000 so that uses RS-232 DF1 to communicate with so we're going to configure an RS-232 DF1 uh, driver for RS links we'll go ahead and click add new uh, you can leave this as a default DF1 and now that we know what COM port we're on we're going to choose COM2 and also we've got to pull the pull down and choose slick channel 0 micro and make sure that your cable is already connected to your Micrologix and then we're going to use the auto configure button to go out and, and have links query the PLC now the PLC has a default um, setting in there out of the box and this just happens to be the baud rate setting for that uh, it did find that okay so we'll say okay to, to this question and we'll close this configure driver box and now we're ready to um, open the browse window here and it should go out and find the Micrologix in this case that's uh, that's what it's done there so we're done with links at this point and we could minimize links and now we're ready to start our programming software in this case is going to be Logix 500 and uh, I'm using the free version of Logix 500 um, which is version 7.1 in this case and there's actually a new version out there version 8 um, but in order to get uh, logics to communicate I like to go to comms system comms um, some people do the online upload thing and um, I think sometimes that causes issues but if I found that if I always go to comms system comms I have a, a, a good success rate and you'll see that uh, it brings up a mini browser of links inside here and you can see the driver is already running there's our marker logic so if we just highlight that and click upload um, we can go ahead and upload the program out of the PLC and since I don't have the existing program I have to create a new file and upload the processor image out of the PLC at this point so the next question will be do you want to go online yes I do and there you have it we're basically online with our Micrologix with our USB cable so um, that's pretty much all there is to configuring your USB cable connecting to a Micrologix 100 and configuring links and using RS Logix 500 um, thanks for watching this little video tutorial this is Chris from Mr. PLC